Greetings, colleagues. I'm happy to give you this week's Dean's update. The update will focus mainly on resumption of services here at Tufts University School of Dental Medicine. Last Friday, we celebrated Juneteenth. The university gave all of our community a day off to reflect and to think and to create action items. Faculty, staff, and students worked very hard to make their voices heard and to work in breakout sessions. The celebration for Juneteenth for the dental school was arranged by Dr. Holloway with several faculty, students, and staff participating. I have to say that for me, the session was emotional. I learned a lot. My eyes were opened, and we have a lot of work to do here at the dental school. With that, the group that got together has thought of some short-term action items. And under Dr. Holloway's leadership, we anticipate that we have a lot of hard work ahead of us. Some of the action items that were thought of were to create regular platforms to be more open to hearing students faculty and staff issues, and for our community members to learn from one another as we share our stories. In addition to that, to make changes in the curriculum and everyday school life that demonstrate that our community believes that Black Lives Matter and we are committed to long-term change. And finally, that the long history of racism in our country has created systems that need to be changed to provide inclusion and equity to the black community. We must increase our commitment and hire more black faculty for TUSDM. Once these recordings for that day are available, I strongly encourage you to watch them. They are powerful voices and they speak to the heart of what our black students, faculty and staff feel. Um, a quick update on the statistics that we're seeing around testing, diagnostics, and treatments for COVID-19. Currently, there are 311 diagnostic tests available. There are 128 treatments being tested, and there are 18 vaccines in development. If you look at diagnostics, there's a whole host of diagnostic test types. Obviously, the reliability and specificity of these tests needs to be looked at. But what is encouraging for many healthcare professions is that there are 25 tests that can provide a COVID test within less than an hour. You could envision a time when we're able to test many people in healthcare facilities at a point of care so that we can be able to treat these patients with perhaps different levels of PPE and with the confidence that they're not either asymptomatic or symptomatic. Here's a slide that depicts many treatments that are being tested. The four major categories are to treat symptoms, to be an anti-inflammatory agent, to have an antiviral growth effect, or to be preventative in nature. Currently, there is one that has been um, approved by the FDA, and there are several that have now moved into phase three and phase four clinical trials. On the vaccine front, we can see that there are many attempts being made to provide a vaccine. Obviously, a vaccine would provide another gateway to opening up, to returning to normal in terms of our activities and providing care for patients. Right now, there's one vaccine in a phase four trial and three in a phase three trial. And here you can see the, the list of the top vaccines that are being tested right now for clearance for human use. Quick update about the main campus plans. Many of you got a update from our president 
Uh, this communication came out on June 23rd. Uh, not only did it talk about a full return for those undergraduate and graduate students to the Medford campus, but it talked about an in-residence experience for all of these students. There was also mention of COVID testing and tracing for our community. And here on the Boston Health Campus, we're hoping as we get into the summer and early fall, that we will also be able to test our community on a regular basis to ensure their well-being, health, and safety of our community. And here you can see the article that was published in the Globe. It says Tufts undergrads to return in the fall. They actually included a picture of the dental school um, in the article, even though we've been continuing some services and are resuming services right now. I will regularly be scheduling joint faculty and staff town halls from now on. These will be at a two week interval. So I look forward to sharing information with our community as we go forward. And I know that we will continue to have class town halls and reach out to class leadership in the coming weeks. Now, just to turn to our resumption of activities in the clinics, this is our phase one draft, and this is what we were doing during our emergency services. And uh, we now see in phase 1A and phase 1B, uh, the limited activities that we're doing on floors two, three, and four. And we're continuing to develop our spaces. Uh, a reminder again, phase zero was our emergency clinic. Phase one is what we're in right now with many of our programs spread out on floors two, three, and four some limited activities on the upper floors. And I'll talk to you a little bit about our phase two thinking and development. The reason for this phasing is that there's been a lot of work that's being done behind the scenes to prepare our facility for regular patient care. This includes adjustments to our air handling systems and our HVAC systems to ensure that the air quality is safe and that it's not being directed to offices and other spaces. And as each floor is developed, we are able to move into other parts of the building. We are still limiting our care to what we consider low risk types of procedures. In other words, not too many aerosols until we feel comfortable that aerosol mitigation can be handled both within the building and within our spaces. So in phase two, which hopefully we'll be able to enter as we get into July and August, um, we will try to open up more of each floor, hopefully getting up to anywhere from 25 to 50%. Much more movement on the elevators to the upper floors. And this will allow us to open up the DMD floors even more to our DMD students. And we will continue to have space developments. In our preclinical areas, we'll still be limited by some social distancing. But as that relaxes, we might be able to get more students into our preclinical spaces. This is a busy slide, but it shows you the kind of schematics that our leadership team is working on in terms of thinking up our, our timelines. So here in the bottom floors, floors two and three, you can appreciate that in mid-June, we're using these floors right now. We've resumed some clinical activities for our fourth years in the DMD clinics. And you can see that there's a lot of work being done with the HVAC upgrades in some of the upper floors. We are hoping that with everything being on target, that we will be able to move some of our AG clinics up onto the 11th floor in early July, onto the 12th floor by the middle to end of July, and our oral surgery program up into their space by the middle of July. This is all obviously all dependent on how well our HVAC upgrades go. We could envision that by August, mid-August, that we'll be able to open our third floor up to DMD activities at that point, and then eventually start opening up our second floor to DMD activities. Here you see an example of the kinds of schedules that are being put together by Dr. Amato and his team and our clinical affairs team to ensure that we can start to resume even more activity on a daily basis rather than having limited basis uh, kind of clinical care in the clinics. Quick update on academic affairs. This information has been provided by Dr. Ramesh. 
As we look to the fall, our D24 and D23 class will remain in kind of a remote and virtual phase. This is simply to keep our building de-densified in terms of numbers of people having to come in and use our physical spaces. It's also anticipating a potential spike in the fall um, so that we don't have to contend with getting students out of the building. Our D24 and D23 winter and spring, we expect these classes to resume here in the building. By then we will have been through a lot of the backflow in the preclinical spaces for current classes. So in-person preclinical, clinical, and some virtual didactic curriculums will take place for our D24 and D23s in the winter and spring. For our D22s in the fall, they'll be virtual and in-person fall term, virtual starting on 8-3-2020 for the first four weeks, followed by in-person in September for the rest of the fall term. Didactic, preclinical, and clinical courses are planned for September through December time period for the D22s. And currently our D21s are in the building doing in-person clinical and preclinical activities. For our advanced graduate education programs in the fall, we have our new residents that are starting here July 1. We anticipate virtual types of classes for advanced graduate education and, and their orientations, and uh, some in-personal -pers um, educational sessions as well. All of our other graduate cl clinics will resume clinical services in a limited and phased way as outlined previously. At this point, I would like to celebrate our residents that are finishing up this academic year, even though their education has been disrupted Many of them have participated in our emergency clinics, and many of them have participated in virtual learning. So we celebrate the accomplishments of our one-year fellow in dental sleep medicine. We celebrate the certificates achieved by the advanced education residents in endodontics, and thank you for your participation in our emergency clinics. We also We'll celebrate the Certificate of Advanced Education in Aesthetic and Operative Dentistry. Many faculty um, have also been participating in the education for all of these residents. So we're thankful for all the work that the directors and faculty have done in each one of these divisions. Certificate of Advanced Education General Dentistry under the leadership of Dr. Terenzi and her faculty have many students that have finished up we wish them well in their future endeavors. For the Certificate of Advanced Education in General Dentistry, again, under the leadership of Dr. Terenzi and her faculty, we thank you for your service, not only while you were here at the school, but for the exemplary work that you did also in the emergency clinics as a group. We have two oral surgeons that are finishing up the Certificate of Advanced Education in Oral Surgery. We celebrate your accomplishments. In orofacial pain, we have two candidates that will be finishing up. And again, we wish you well in your future endeavors. Several students are finishing up Certificate of Advanced Education in Orthodontics and Dentofacial Orthopedics. Their names are mentioned here. In the pediatric dentistry area as well, we have a large cohort of residents that have been here, that have been instrumental instrumental in the care of our pediatric population. So thank you for all that you've done and we wish you well. In the area of periodontology, we have several residents that are finishing up and we know that they'll represent our specialty in our school very well. And then finally, in the area of prosthodontics, we celebrate all of your accomplishments and thank you for the good care, comprehensive care that you have provided our patients here at TUSDM. We do have some budget finalization timelines and steps on July 1. Uh, we'll be finishing up our analysis of our budget for AY21. Uh, we will work with chairs and deans on July 6. And on July 8th, we hope to communicate to Central about some of the changes that we continue to have to make here at the dental school in order to mitigate some of the financial issues that we're facing and the goal will be to start implementing our AY21 budget 
uh, by July 22nd. So I thank you for everything that you're doing. I remain inspired by all of you and we will continue to communicate with you on developments and changes as they become apparent. Thank you.